Are you looking to improve your SAT math score this year? If so, comment below. Let me know where you're at with your math score and what you're hoping to achieve. Hi guys, Laura here with STP. In this video, I'm gonna give you seven practical tips so that you can score a 700 plus in math. Before we get started, this video is brought to you by Preply Digital SAT Prep App. Unlock over a thousand exclusive questions in both the English and the math. Access both timed quizzes and untimed drills so that you can practice each type of digital SAT question. It features an AI tutor named Wispy that you can ask all of your deepest questions to. And best of all, you can prep from the convenience of the palm of your hand. You don't need to be tied down to a computer. Do it while you're laying in bed, while you're waiting for the bus, or while you're bored in study hall. This is a one time your teacher won't yell at you to get off your phone if you're in class. Right now, for our loyal YouTube followers, we are offering 50% off your first month of Preply. Just head to the App Store or Google Play, download Preply, and use the promo code STPDEAL at checkout. Okay, tip number one, you want to take a diagnostic test first to see where your weaknesses are in the math. You can either use a score report from a digital SAT you've already taken, or you can use your PSAT score report since that was a digital test. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to link down in the description to our math test progress tracker so that you can actually determine what types of questions you're missing and see if there's any emerging patterns because those are the types of questions you will want to focus on first. All right, tip number two, you're going to want to brush up on concepts. So I would suggest you head to College Board's Question Bank or you can even use the Preply app and filter to the types of questions that you need to practice and keep doing those over and over until you get better at them. Check with the answer explanations if you get something wrong and make sure you are clear on what you did wrong and what you need to do next time. Now I get it, sometimes these answer explanations can be very cumbersome and difficult to follow. So if you're prepping on your own and reading the answer explanations isn't really working for you, then I would recommend you sign up for our math self-paced course where you can access exclusive video lessons for myself and my tutor team that will explain things in really simple ways that you can understand. So I'll link to the course up here so you can go get that. And right now we're offering $50 off for our YouTube viewers. So put 50 off in at checkout and you can get that. Okay, tip number four is to use math strategies. There are going to be times when you get stuck on a math problem. It's completely natural and it's nothing to panic over. This is a time when if you can't find a front door way to solve the problem, you can use a back door way to solve the problem. So let me give you five of my favorite math strategies that you can apply yourself. The first math strategy you should be using is called working backwards. That's when you take the numbers and the answer choices and you plug them into the problem until one works. These are great for word problems where you have integers as your answer choices or for really any time when you're having a tough time coming up with an equation. Strategy number two is nice numbers. This is a great strategy when the problem is very confusing and abstract. So if you notice a lot of variables in the question and a lot of variables in the answer choices, assign numbers to them and then use the same numbers in the answer choices until you get a match. My third favorite math strategy is drawing a picture. Guys, drawing a picture is the most underrated strategy you can use. Anytime the SAT talks about a sphere or a cylinder or a rectangular field and they don't give you a diagram, jot it down on your scrap paper and go from there. If you have a visual, it is way easier to see what's going on and you'll have a way higher likelihood of getting the question right. Tip number four, if you are completely stuck, just guess a middle number in the range. You have a higher probability of picking up the point if you pick a middle number instead of an outside number. And then tip number five is majority rules. Again, if you are desperate and you need to guess, look at your answer choices and try to pick the answer choice that has the most in common with the other answer choices. 
choices. So for instance, if I notice three answer choices have a square root in them and one does not, I'm gonna cross off the one that doesn't because it's not in the majority. All right guys, if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I don't know what you are waiting for. Smash that subscribe button and notification bell below right now. If you're trying to improve your SAT score this year, there's no better way to get started than by subscribing to my channel. All right, tip number five, this is a big one, you want to use the Desmos calculator as much as possible. So the Desmos calculator is really, really good for two specific scenarios as well. Anytime they give you a system of equations or a system of inequalities, or anytime they give you a very complicated problem to solve algebraically. For instance, if you notice two linear equations cross, their intersection point is the solution. If the two lines don't cross, there is no solution. With inequalities, where their solution sets overlap is the solution. With a parabola, where it crosses the x-axis is the solution. And if you have a parabola with a line, wherever the line crosses the parabola is the solution. But if you can just throw it into Desmos and look at it graphically, it'll be much easier to determine the answer than trying to solve it using algebra. All right, if you're finding this video helpful so far, show me some love, hit the like button below. All right, tip number six. After you've practiced relearning the math concepts you've forgotten and done a bunch of drills on the different concepts, now you should be going into blue book exams and taking full length time practice tests. You're gonna to wanna to work on your pacing, and there's no better way to do that than by taking a full practice. If you're aiming for a perfect math score, you wanna be able to bank enough time where you can go back to every question and do it twice. The biggest killer of perfect scores for high-flying students is making careless mistakes. And the only way to ensure you make no careless mistakes is by doing every single problem twice. I'm telling you guys, I have tried just looking at my work and checking to see if I made any mistakes and it is not as effective as actually redoing and reworking the entire problem. That's it for now. If you guys made it to the end of this video, go ahead and put an abacus emoji in the comments below. One, I will be impressed if you know what an abacus is. And two, it'll just make me so happy to know you stuck it out with me to the very end. And until next time, guys, happy prepping.